as Nigerians continue to dissect the aftermath of the 2023 general elections. A citizens' town hall meeting has been planned for Tuesday, this week, in Abuja, the nation's capital. The major objective, according to the organizers, as clearly spelled out, is to facilitate a more holistic understanding of an electoral process which promised much, but under-delivered, in terms of organization, transparency, and outcome. It also aims at facilitating a conversation on how to reform Nigeria's electoral system. The National Assembly, made up of the Senate and House of Representatives, is in support of this platform. I'm now being joined to look at this in greater detail by Honorable Adedayo Balogun, who is Chairman, House of Representatives Committee on Electoral Reforms. Thank you for joining me on this day live, Honorable Balogun. Thank you for having me. The name is Adebayo Balogun. Ah, okay. This is my producers. They went and wrote Adebayo. Don't worry. <laughs> We're used to that. They make the mistakes all the time. <laughs> Honorable Adebayo Balogun. Okay. Thank you very much. We stand corrected. But, Honorable, let me ask you. I was at a seminar with you uh, last week, uh, Saturday, where we looked at this electoral reform issue and after that uh, retreat, the Joint Committee of the National Assembly on Electoral Matters came up with this call for a public conversation scheduled for Tuesday, November 28. But the lingering question that people are still asking is that these lawmakers or the presidency, would they be able to summon the political will to take a further look at the Electoral Act and also the controversial sections of the 1999 Constitution in relation to elections, considering the fact that you, you or all of you, benefited, including your good self, from some of the omissions that we're now, you know, saying should be corrected. Do you think that Nigerians can be assured of that political will? Why do you want to correct something that benefited you and brought you to power? Well, let me start by telling you that the last amendment that brought about the 2020 Electoral Act actually affected many of us. You find out that uh, a larger percentage of our members didn't return even from the primary levels. Uh, during the amendment, the, even we omitted many members, or even the members who are the statutory delegates from contesting, I mean, from participating in the primaries, which actually affected many of us. So when we are talking about amendments of the Constitution or any act, it is for the people to amend. We are just your representatives. That's why we are calling people to this town hall meeting or stakeholders meeting. So this, uh, this is where all of us can come together with our ideas to ensure that we get it right. Many times we complain that we have a very bad law, but we have the opportunity of making a change. If you find out what happened during the last uh, constitution amendment, many people never participated. I was there at the state, at Lagos State uh, public hearing. I was surprised that I could not even see many stakeholders that were supposed to be there. There were no local government representative, no state representative, traditional rulers were not there. The people that matters, it's just the CSOs that were coming together to form the body of the people present at the uh, public hearings. And that was why the, the, the one we had together at uh, Lagos last week, you find out that we have the traditional rulers there. The only rule of Ruland was there. The only solo of Solo Alade was also there. The local government chairman have their representative there. So we must ensure, and the speaker of Lagos State House of Assembly also have representative. He was represented by the majority leader of the house. These are the areas where, the, the, these are the representative of the people that needs to come together to take a decision on the laws we are making. 
I was surprised that that's why the, the, the struggle we had in Lagos during the SS, I was surprised that during the public hearing on constitutional reform, which also had the state police as an item, people never came out from Lagos State to support state police. And that was why when they took it back, the state police could no longer go back as an item to be considered at the final, uh, during the final consideration. So I want to appeal to every one of us. Lawmaking is about the people. It's not just about us. We are your representative. Public hearings are for people to come and hear their views, present a, a memorandum for us to consider, and also follow up during the public hearing. So it is not just about us. And I, and I believe this time around, we are not just going to stay at the one we're having at Abuja on Tuesday. We are going to go to the seas geopolitical zones of Nigeria to tell people what we have on ground. And uh, let's look at the items that people are already debating. People are talking about the voters' rights and inclusivity, which, which also include um, diaspora voting and uh, uh, electronics voting. We are all going to look at this, uh, this issue. How visible are they? People are talking about early voting. People are talking about voters' registration and uh, uh, the voters' register itself. So many names are supposed to have been removed from the register are still there. Dead people, people have changed their addresses. All of them are still there. How do we nominate our candidates during the primaries? The, the, the electoral technology, ballot paper, uh, ballot management, elect, election and election result management, electoral offenses prosecution. These are issues that people are already talking about. Let's, let's come together and put our position together so that Nigerians, it's not just the, the loudest noise this time around, we want to hear the majority view. It's not the loudest noise. Many times people think the loudest noise represents Nigerians. It is about the numbers, how many people are talking. So when you don't go for public hearing, when issues will actually be discussed critically, but you go on television, criticize government, talk about beautiful ideas, but when it's time for you to come and discuss the real issue, we are nowhere to be found. So we are appealing to people. This is a step forward now. We are going to meet on this. We are starting a process now. The one at Abuja is, is the beginning of a process that will continue and move to each do geopolitical zones. So it is not just about us, it is about Nigerians. OK, Honorable Balogun, could you tell us, for the benefit of Nigerians who are in diaspora, who may not be able to come physically to Abuja, how they can take part in this national conversation that a joint committee on electoral matters is going to kick off on Tuesday. Will it be possible for Nigerians, for example, to join via Zoom or not? And what, what's the level of preparation well, for like this I said, this, this, is, this is the first one. Yes, I, it, by the time we have this first one, people will discuss about, um, this, these are part of in, inclusivity. How do people join? Yes, we, during the first one, we are looking to see some of the lapses and see how we get other people uh, along. Although we have, if you, if you go through the advertisement, we said people should submit memorandum. So if you have any idea, you can send a memorandum. We, we, we have the website uh, published already. So people are supposed to send in the, the, their memorandum. Everybody have, don't, uh, don't have to be there physically. It's going to be a live program on Tuesday. So, but moving forward, we'll put into consideration um, Zoom. Uh, uh, I mean, Zoom activities, people can actually come in through Zoom and some other uh, media. But for this one, I'm not too sure if the organizers have Zoom uh, participation in place. But this one is just going to be even a short program, just 10 o'clock to 1 o'clock, because it's going to be live. So it's just 4 o'clock to uh, 10 o'clock, 10 a.m to 1 p.m. on Tuesday. But this is just going to be the beginning. And the, the ones that we are going to take to all the geopolitical zones will be very, very inclusive. We're going to have the traditional rulers, market people, uh, trade union, um, MBA, representatives of MBA, political parties, everybody, all stakeholders. And this just to ginger their thought. By the time after we have this one, then everybody will know that something is happening. We want to let them know that their view will be considered. 
what they feel, their, their opinions are very important to us. It is it's a, a collision of their views that forms the law. Honorable members don't just sit down in their houses and just think, oh, what should I write? We'll collate the views of Nigerians and put it together and then make a law out of it. So that is the message you want to send first to people that we really <coughs> need them to be involved. And before we go to the zonal level, we just want to use this as an introductory part to let people know that in making laws, stakeholders meeting, public hearings are very, very vital. And that is the message you want to pass on Tuesday. Okay, Chairman, House of Reps uh, Committee on Electoral Matters. Let me ask you, we've had uh, general elections in 2023. We have had uh, off-cycle elections in Imo, uh, Kogi, and Bayesa. We have had court rulings on uh, most of these elections, the most celebrated being Zanfara uh, Kano and, uh, you know, other states uh, in this matter. Now, let me ask you, not speaking as chairman now, what do you think are those key arising issues that we need to worry about? One part will seem to be, in my view, yes. the independence of INEC, electronic transmission of results. But what are those key issues for you that you think Nigerians should focus on as a participant in the process, not as chairman of House of Reps Committee on Electoral Matters. Now we should let people understand most of the things we are saying. Electronic transmission is different from real-time transmission. Electronics is about ensuring that you transmit this thing electronically. Real-time means immediately. Then if, they have, if you have some delays, that does not remove electronic transmission. It's just that you have a delay, and then it can be transmitted elect electronically. But the most important part is that during the last election, nobody, as of today, nobody went to court to say that I scored so, so, so amount of uh, votes, but I was given less than what I scored. Most of the things they went to court on were um, technical issues. So nobody said that the result posted by INEC was not what they got as uh, their own result. So we, we should be careful with some of this information we, we send out to people. Secondly, if we look at the litigation going on, yes, that's why we are looking at some of the ambiguities in the, in the electoral act and the, also in the constitution, some inconsistencies that we need to actually correct. And it is when we come together, we must agree to come together and then look at it holistically. That is where we can now make some of these amendments. You will see somewhere a, a, um, a section of the constitution saying so, so, so thing, and you look at the next section contradicting the first section. So these are issues that we we'll look at and then correct. We can no longer be going to court on issues that we can correct. Many people went to court on issues that you don't even go to court with. The, the, the reason why you can go to the tribunal have been actually been spelled out. But some people still went out of it and went to, court, uh, to the tribunal, wasting the precious time of the court. And we find out that the, the, the judges became so overwhelmed. And he got to a stage, I believe they started even doing cut and paste in their judgment because these people have to write. You know, in Nigeria, we still do long, long hand, uh, long hand writing, and that they call it. They still have to write the judgment, and then there could be mistakes somewhere along the way. So, if there are some mistakes somewhere, maybe I think it was an 80-page judgment, and we have an, an issue with about three lines in that judgment. So, and you know, even in the judgment, we have three judges. It's not just uh, one judge. All the other two are okay. And if you have just few lines in the in in, in a whole judgment, uh, we should not orchestrate some of these things. Sometimes we give the, the the country a bad image. The way we orchestrate every little mistakes made in Nigeria. Not that other other uh, countries are perfect. Not that their own judiciary don't make mistakes. But we make an issue out of it. Unfortunately, to the the secretariat of the uh, the court did not even make 
uh, also made a mess out of the whole situation. Instead of finding out what should be done, the, I think he, he went out and uh, gave some information that also orchestrated the, the whole situation. So I think every one of us needs to work together to ensure that in, in, in getting it right, it is not just about the political class, it's about everyone. Of, even the media has a lot of role to, pay, to play. People believe in what they hear on television and on radio. So before we, we, we say some of these things out, we must look at people who will give precise information, adequate information to the public. And I want to thank you, Mr. Ruben Abati, and the way you analyze some of these uh, judgment and some of these uh, judicial process, electoral process, is like it's, it's like a lecture, and nobody will listen to some of your lectures and uh, will not believe that yes, Nigeria have hope. So I want to thank you on your own part, but I want every other uh, Nigerian journalist to take a cue from such uh, development. So it takes every one of us to make this law. And uh, it's not that anybody's actually benefiting anything. If you look at the last election, once again, we, many of our members lost out. And they said we shot ourselves in the leg. But well, I'm, I'm happy nobody's coming out to regret anything because we believe it's Nigeria first. Beavers has been the biggest game changer in our electoral process. It's, it's, it, the, the major problem we'll be having is the accreditation process. And beavers have solved that accreditation process. People can no longer do proxy voting. You can no longer do what we call Iboloyi of those days. A, an area with just maybe 10,000 people will be coming with 50,000 votes. That is no longer possible. And that is the, what you, that's the credit we should give to the, uh, to the Knight Assembly for coming out with that amendment in the, 2020, uh, the 2022 Amendment Act. So well, I want us honorable. to all believe that, yes, we have a process. Though it might not be perfect, we all have to. It's still a work in progress. Uh, a work in progress that honorable we should all Balogun. work together to improve. Honorable Balogun, before you get away with this uh, press song. I'm hearing you. In, in the, this press song for beavers. You recall. Oh, that, if I'm not, okay, ask it again if you feel I've not answered it. Yeah, you recall okay. that in Imo State. Okay, rephrase it if I've not answered it. In the off cycle election in Imo yeah. State, Senator Atan Achonu, okay. the candidate of the Labour Party, complained okay. about Vivas not working yeah. in some local government areas. Yaga Africa complained okay. that INEC had okay. said that, look, in some uh, uh, Places, Yaga Africa argued that results were reported for places where voting did not take place. In Kogi, in this same off cycle okay. election, pre field result sheets mm -hmm. were already in circulation in five uh, local government areas, including uh, 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 Ogori Magongo and, uh, and uh, Ajaukuta and other places. And Adavi, these are three of the five local government areas. Now, <laughs> what happened to Beavers? <laughs> Beavers producing results that never took place, accrediting people that never showed up. Yes. So uh, we have to qualify this okay, let me answer. place of uh, Beavers. OK, OK. Now. What happened in those, in those areas were actually reported to INEC, and INEC noted them. Because you see, we, we are not talking about we have a perfect system. Some people will still want to beat the system. The, those areas we are result were written ahead of the election, were noted, and they could have uh, redone those elections in those areas. But after collation of all the results, we realized that the total number the total votes available in those areas were not enough to meet the difference between the first, the winner and the first runner-up. So under such circumstance, you don't even need to go and redo such elections again. Because if the, if the winner is leading with uh, 300,000 and the, the total 
votes available in all those areas uh, that they, uh, they, they were complained about, that INEC was also assured, uh, that has assured them that they would do something about, were well, just maybe 50,000. So it will not make any economic sense for you to go and redo an election that the total result will give you only 50,000 votes when the lead is already 200,000. That was why those areas were abandoned. If the, uh, the result had been closer, then they would have retaken those elections in those areas. Not that they didn't know. Yes, some people wanted to be smart. Writing a re result ahead of time is no problem of vivas. It's not that they used vivas and vivas didn't work. That was actually a criminal act. And now it's not left for INEC to take, to prosecute anybody found guilty in such areas. Because, you know, INEC too is engaging some of these people. You have NYSE workers, you have um, lecturers in the universities, senior civil servants that were brought together as um, ad hoc staff to do all these jobs. No INEC staff is actually on ground on those uh, in, at the unit level. So we, it's all Nigerians. We are all Nigerians. The elections are actually conducted by Nigerians. So whatever we do is a reflection of who we are. It's not just about INEC. So if you have a child, a, uh, a child that is one of the NYSE staff that work there, you should hold your child also culpable. These are the people that we should all hold culpable. It's not just about INEC. So INEC itself, I've said that if, you, if there was any failure of beavers, the election will be retaken the following day or the following week. So INEC have never said that they wouldn't have done it. So it is not about the fault of INEC now. It is about some people who want to be dubious. But what do we do next? And that's one of the reasons people are calling for the uh, electoral offenses uh, tribunal. <coughs> so, so that we can remove that body from the neck of INEC so that they can concentrate on the work of uh, election, uh, conduction of elections only. So police who are there to prosecute whoever is found culpable. So I'm not saying people are not going to try something else. Some politicians, it's not just only about the ruling party, it's about everybody. It's about everybody. No party can claim innocence of uh, electoral malpractices. So an INEC is not saying it's 100% perfect. So in those areas, the issues <coughs> that were reported were noted by INEC. And it's not the fault of Beavers. Beavers okay. never failed. Okay, Chairman, House of Reps uh, Committee on Electoral Matters. One of the issues that came up at our conversation last week at the retreat was an issue I brought up about affirmative action. Fifteen women in the House of Reps, three in the Senate. If you look cumulatively since 1999, over a 24-year period, Nigerian women have not been properly represented in the National Assembly. But I noticed that you and your colleagues were opposed to the idea of women empowerment and affirmative action for women. Can you repeat the argument again in this public forum? Why is it so difficult for the National the, Assembly the to come up with a decision to say, look, there must be special dispensation for Nigerian women to bring them into this uh, public uh, policy-making arena? You see, like we said, it's not about the loudest noise. It's about the majority voice. This is not about electoral matters now. It's about the Constitution itself. And that's why you must do your lobbying well. You must do your lobbying well within the, the stakeholders. And you must look at Nigeria. It's not just about people in the South and people in the diaspora. Re religion is at play when it comes to issues like this. Religion, culture, are at play when it comes to sensitive issues like this. You don't force, you don't legislate some things. You don't force it on people. You discuss it. You gain their trust. You gain their support. So it is for the women fold or an odd reconciled people to ensure that they work together and convince the areas that are not ready to accept uh, this issue we are talking about. So it's not just about bringing it to the National Assembly. People represent various areas. We have 360 federal constituencies. 
if people from more constituencies don't culturally or religiously do not support women in positions. We, the minority cannot force it on them. So we must continue to discuss. We must continue, because education is very important. If this woman in uh, Adamawa also, if she had won, probably she would have been the first female governor in Nigeria. And coming from the North would have been a, made a very strong statement in Nigeria. So these are issues. In Lagos, women have been deputy governor several times, deputy speaker. Women have contested governorship in Lagos. So there's no position. Women are top executive in Lagos. At a time, majority of the permanent secretary in, in, in Lagos state were women. About it, at a time, three chief justices in Nigeria, in Lagos state, were women consecutively. So it is about, it is about the culture, the people. So it's not just about me. I can, I can force uh, what I want on the next person. When I was a local government chairman, the leader of my house, well, actually a, a lady, even she was opposed by many women, and I, I, I appeal to them that, no, we must give her a chance. So this, this, this is about the people. So I, I believe they should continue the work. It's not impossible. It is for us to start educating our people. Are not, and again, they, we must also work on the women. The women, do they really support themselves? If you take it to vote in the general public, can a woman win presidency in Nigeria? If you put it, you won't tell the women only to vote. If you make it only a woman vote, is a woman going to win? So these are issues. It's not just about we want to legislate it. So and legislation is just not about a section, it's about Nigeria. And it's not just about the loudest voice, it's about the majority. Okay, I recall that at the retreat, you know, the other Saturday, at least one of your colleagues stood up and said, please, nobody should touch this subject. It's about religion and culture in his own part of the country, specifically it's that we hide our women. We don't want our women to come to the public arena. <laughs> Interesting country in the 21st century. But you see, let's that's talk, repeating what I just said. Yeah. So let's talk quickly about diaspora voting. The people in the diaspora, they want to vote. And I see that in the items that the Joint Committee of the National Assembly has listed, uh, diaspora voting is part of it. Are you optimistic that diaspora voting will work even when <laughs> voting in Nigeria is not working? It's still a futuristic thing. First of all, we must be able to get our data right. You must be able to know, you must be able to have a good database before you can be talking about diaspora voting. In Nigeria, how many people have identification? The, the name, I think less than 30% of Nigeria are on the national register. Many people abroad are not even on the national register. They don't have a name number. So, and if you talk about diaspora voting, it's not just about America and uh, Europe. If you talk about Sudan and many other West African, uh, I mean, African states, if you know the number of Nigerians in most of these states, the number of people that in most of those states that can claim to be Nigerians, because we don't have a perfect uh, identification system in place. We must look at all these situations before we talk about diaspora voting. Even the electronic voting people are talking about in Nigeria today, Nigerian Bar Association had an election. I, I, I'm, I'm sure you know they are still in court. So many other organizations could not even have a perfect election. So you cannot isolate INEC. It's about a system. Our, our atti uh, attitude towards election, our winner-takes-all attitude, our win at all cost attitude. It's about us as a Nigerian. It's for us to now change our attitude. For everyone to know that, yes, we are going to a new regime where people must live by the rule of law, not by the rule of what I want, not about the rule of the loudest noise. It's about the rule of the majority, which is the rule of law. So it is for every one of us to look at this situation. Is it visible now to start? When we discuss it, experts will come in. We look at how do we even people who have even struggling to get their national their, their passports. How would they get identification? 
Then, how do you go by the constitutional provision which says that you must present your voter's card at the voting point? Are we going to create polling units at every embassy in the world? Because when we say the diaspora voting is accepted, that means in every country of the world, we must have a representative. You must have party agents, INEC officer, so that they can present their cards as stipulated by the Electoral Act. So these are issues we, we have to look at holistically. It's not that I just wake up, we decide, ah, I love this. We must look at the visibility and workability of most of these processes we are agitating for. How many, how many countries of the world is doing uh, diaspora voting? So we ask ourselves some of these questions. So yes, it's something I love to have, because I have many families abroad. I have many people who, who, want, who would love to vote abroad. But abroad is not just about America and uh, Europe. It's about the world. Diaspora is about the world. Well, Honorable uh, Balogun, I'd like to thank you very much for joining me on this is a Live Day Sunday talk show. And I'm hoping that when the conversation begins on Tuesday, <clears throat> listening to Nigerians, the National Assembly Joint Committee on Electoral Matters will be open minded enough to take input from Nigerians. And we encourage all Nigerians to take part in that uh, conversation. Thank you very much for joining us.